I am so glad you're here, because today we're embarking on a journey through the world of amine synthesis. Previously, we've learned about several methods for synthesizing amines. Now, join me as we explore new methods for preparing amines, from classic reactions to modern techniques. One method for synthesizing alkylated amines is substitution reactions, where ammonia or other amines can undergo substitution reactions like SN1 and SN2 to create newly formed alkylated amines. Now, importantly, what has happened here, once we've generated our alkylated amine, is in fact a flaw in using substitution. And that is that because we've added this alkyl group to the amine functional group, we've actually made this nucleophile at the nitrogen lone pair even more nucleophilic. In fact, what would happen then is another alkyl bromide, for example, would just undergo a subsequent substitution reaction to now make a secondary amine. And if you're interested in making a secondary amine, then that's great. However, now that we've added a second alkyl group to the amine, we've in fact made this amine even more nucleophilic, and this reaction won't stop. So what will happen again is it will further alkylate doing another substitution reaction to now making a tertiary amine. And this is the problem with substitution reactions using amines and why it's not really the best way to form alkylated amines. A ZID synthesis provides another powerful method for preparing amines, particularly to prepare primary amines by undergoing reduction, making them valuable intermediates in organic synthesis. Acylazids can undergo curious rearrangements to generate carbamates, a powerful class of insecticides. By carefully controlling reaction conditions, we can selectively convert azids into the desired amine and amide products. Azids, or azides as you may hear them referred to as, are fairly strange molecules. They contain two nitrogen atoms that contain a negative charge with two lone pairs on them, and a nitrogen atom in the center that's positively charged. All three of these nitrogen atoms are connected via double bonds. If we were to look at the pKa of the conjugate acid, which is hydrozoic acid, we would find that that pKa value is around 4.6. And this should let you know that the azid, which is the conjugate base of this hydrozoic acid, is going to be very nucleophilic because the conjugate acid has a very low pKa. And in fact, what we see is that if we are to introduce things like alkyl bromides to something like potassium azid, which is a salt which would separate into its negatively charged and positively charged components, that the very nucleophilic azid would react via a substitution reaction to generate a new alkyl azid. And notice that therefore this is going to prevent any further reaction from occurring because that nucleophilic lone pair has already been attacked. This allows us to generate primary amines in a way that using something like ammonia via substitution reactions did not allow for. The Gabriel synthesis is another method for the formation of primary amines through the reaction of a phthalamid salt with an alkyl halide via an SN2 reaction. In phthalamid, a nitrogen is flanked by two carbonyl groups. This means that the NH bond is a lot more acidic than it normally would be because the resulting anion would be resonant stabilized. Therefore, the first step is deprotonation, usually through the method of a strong base. This generates a newly formed salt, or newly basic compound, called potassium phthalamide. Once deprotonated, the next step is to add an alkyl halide. The nitrogen nucleophile will then attack the alkyl halide in an SN2 reaction to form a new nitrogen to carbon bond. The third step is to liberate the amine. This is done through the addition of hydrazine, which ends up adding to the carbonyl carbon. And through a sequence of steps, the amine ends up as the leaving group. An even more versatile method for generating amines is going to be reductive amination, where a primary amine can attack a carbonyl group. And when doing so, this is going to generate what is called an imine functional group. So an imine is formed through this process as an intermediate. Now notice that the reaction conditions call for acidic conditions at low pHs using some acid. And this means we can protonate the imine nitrogen to generate what is called a iminium ion. So we can generate the iminium ion, which now places a positive charge on nitrogen. And then from there, what we can do is reduce this iminium ion to generate our amine. And we do this by using a compound called sodium cyanoborohydride. 
and sodium cyanoborohydride is a slightly weaker reducing agent than something like just straight up sodium borohydride. And this will reduce this imine functional group, which is practically like a carbonyl substituent. And this will allow us to reduce that double bond to generate our new alkylated amine where now we don't have any more of those double bonds and we have reduced this by attacking one of those hydrides at this carbonyl carbon and then now we're left with our alkylated amine. Now let's try some practice problems to gauge your understanding. Pause the video now and try these problems independently. Then resume the video and I'll walk you through the answers. For the first problem, we're performing what's called reductive amination. Remember, the first step is to generate an imine intermediate where the nitrogen replaces the oxygen. This is called an imine functional group. And then the second step is to protonate that imine to form an iminium ion, and then finally reduce the iminium ion using sodium borohydride. And this is going to give us our alkylated amine where we have now generated a brand new alkyl amine that we were previously unable to access via things like substitution reactions. Another way that we can synthesize primary amines is called the Gabriel synthesis, where you're using this molecule which is called phthalamide. In the presence of a strong base, you'll deprotonate this nitrogen to hydrogen bond, which will then subsequently undergo substitution with an alkyl halide. So therefore, afterwards, we will reduce or liberate the primary amine using hydrazine, which is NH2, NH2, and this will generate our new primary amine. So again, this is called the Gabriel synthesis, and this would be the product of that reaction. Finally, we're looking at the use of sodium azid. So remember, azid molecules are nucleophiles, which will act via nucleophilic attack at the carbon that contains your aryl halide. And remember that in SN2 reactions, we always have backside attack. So this azid would come and attack at this position. So keep that in mind when thinking about the way that the substituent is going to be on this cyclohexane ring. If I were to just draw that first step, what this would look like then is that the azid would be at this position where we have now created our new alkyl azid. And then the second step is actually how we reduce this azid down to a primary amine. So palladium on carbon in the presence of hydrogen gas, that is going to give us our final product, which is going to be that primary amine. And notice that it is going to be pointing in the down position or the equatorial position of our cyclohexane ring. And there you have it, amine synthesis. If you learned something in this video, I hope you don't mind giving it a thumbs up. You should subscribe to my channel if you're interested in learning more about chemistry content. Additionally, if you have any questions about this material or anything else related to chemistry, drop it as a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.